time now for Perspective. And today we're looking at a new novel, uh, The Freedom Artist. Uh, it brings us to a world where people are largely asleep, unable or unwilling to think for themselves. Books have disappeared. The world is a prison. With some frighteningly contemporary commentary on life today, the question is, will we or will they wake up? The Freedom Artist is the latest work of Booker Prize winning author Ben Okri, who joins us now. Mr Okri, thanks for your time. The book, I mean, it's clearly set in a fictional world where people are literally turned physically into jackals, but it only takes a slight exaggeration from my reading of our world today. Do you see this book more as fiction or a, wor a warning to us about our reality? Um, I think it's a fictional warning. Um, I think it's, uh, for me, uh, an essential warning about uh, the slow erosion of our freedoms. Um, for me, also a very deep warning about what's happening to truth in our times. Um, and more than that, I think it's a, it's a cry and a plea um, and a, a reaching out into the mind of the reader and hopefully shaking them by the scruff of the neck and saying, look at what this world is turning into on our watch. Indeed, getting the reader to react, because a lot of books you read, you escape into their world. I did find reading this, that the, the book kind of came into my world and, and did have that slightly disturbing um, reaction to it. But was the book then, in a way, born out of fear? You talk about the books disappearing, or concentration goes, you know, it, how is your view of the world today? Well, my, my view of the world is kind of part, part tiny bit hopeful, but largely troubled. Um, I think we're living in a really, really troubling times. Um, you look at the news across the world, you look at nations, the rise of all kinds of dangerous um, negative aspects to, of, the, of the human spirit, the rise of division, the rise of, of fear, of hate, um, a, a, a demonization of, of, of immigrants, a demonization of truth. Um, I think it's, I think it's uh, you just look across the world, there's kind of protests rising from the young. Um, there's a great feeling that um, really important things need to be done about our world. Um, and I think the fundamental cry is essentially what you said earlier, to wake up, mm. but also to keep asking questions. Indeed, and the question asker is really in your book, those looking for freedom to get out of the prison. At one point you say, well, artists are the closest to them, but then you don't paint a great picture of artists either, saying, you know, they're the new bankers. Uh, today, you know, where do you see the artist's role in the world today? The artist's role should be really uh, uh, almost a, a semi-revolutionary one, which is to say they, they should show us a picture of ourselves that we don't really want to see, but is what is becoming true of ourselves. Mm. Um, I think artists should be the awakeners. Artists should be the, the, the figures that are bold enough to show us our worst and our deepest fears and our greatest possibilities at the same time. Artists should be figures of courage. But part of the problem of waking up in a like is to actually see the horrors in the world. You know, so there is an element, is there not, of self-preservation in the fact that we're all turning away and sleeping? Absolutely, absolutely. But it's not really self-preservation. It's more like um, self-concealing. Uh, mm. um, and I think we're not going to be able to transform the world till we look at it. I think it's one of the great things that uh, many of the great thinkers of the 20th century told us and taught us quite clearly. You cannot transform the world until you have looked at it hard and strong and deep. Now you have uh, three or four main characters. They all come from different backgrounds and they seem to have a different ability of seeing that truth, if you like, uh, having that freedom. Uh, but, but they all go through a similar path of finding their way to freedom. Do you think that then we're all capable of this level of freedom no matter where we're born in the world? Yes, I think we are. Um, but you see, the, the, the uh, I think the freedom here is, is, uh, is both a social freedom, um, it's a cultural freedom, but primarily it is a freedom in one's head, mm. a freedom in Going one's in. spirit. Mm. Um, and I think that is the, one of the greatest gifts of the human condition, that whether you're born into utter poverty or born into complete wealth, you have that capacity your inner strength, your inner to turn strength. inward and outward and discover something of your essential freedom and to be able to, through that, take some measure, some measure of control, um, if not over your life, at least how life affects you. Indeed, there's a good debate in the book as well over equality versus creativity. And, you know, there's a negative side to equality in the world. You mean at the moment? 
Well, yeah, in general, there's a negative element of, of wanting to make us all, you know, equal yeah, to each well, other. Yes, yes. There's a, but the, in the book, there's a negative, dangerous element of wanting to make us all equal downwards. Mm. Um, which is to say to, to make us all equally ignorant or make us all equally avoiding of the truth of life or make us all equally illiterate about culture and possibility. Whereas I think there's another kind of equality, which is to make us equal upward, um, equal towards our possibilities, equal towards culture, mm -hmm. equal towards political yeah. freedom. Indeed, not uh, the material side of things. But now, um, when you uh, read your book as well, there's very heavy religious references. You know, you say that, well, the church created the first myth, that Garden of Eden, uh, you know, which people were kicked out of as soon as they thought of freedom. So how do you see the church's role? <laughs> I, I, I have uh, many questions for the church, and, and I, thought, I think the church should have many questions for itself. Um, for me, the, the most important thing is our spiritual freedom. For me, the most important thing is um, not the imposition of um, um, a dogma um, or a way of saying. I think spirituality and religion should actually empower mm. our freedom, empower our spirituality, empower our, our, our humanity. Other um, than that idea of obedience and following. More than obedience and following, um, I, I think it's growing to one's uh, potential. I think it's growing towards one's truth. Mm. Uh, now, also, Mr. Okri, lots of references to ancient mythology. You know, explain to me the, the reason for using those tools in this book. Well, I, I think all important storytellers work with myth um, because myth is the, is the core place where our deepest values, our deepest possibilities are coded. Um, and one of the things I was trying to explore in this book is the way in which power structures alter those myths as a way of manipulating us. Um, and I think there's two big fights going on in society at any point, which is a fight for the control of myth, in the same way as there's a fight for the control of water. Myth is the water of our life. The people who tweak the myths, the people who mess around with the myths, they mess around with our heads and they mess around with our realities. And I think it's our fundamental responsibility to keep our myths pristine, to keep them pure and to keep them helping us and to see, take them away from the myth manipulators. Indeed, to keep them light. Uh, very finally, this is a personal question, but you use the term upwake in your book rather <laughs> than wake up. Am I, is that, I know that there's a multimedia theatre piece actually called upwake, but you know, explain to me where does that word come from for you? Um, wake, wake, wake up um, seems to me to incline downwards for some reason. Um, or at least it's more passive. More passive. You're asleep and you wake up. Whereas up wake, by the very fact that up comes before the wake, Positive. it inclines you upwards. It's a, it's a more revolutionary act. It's a more bold consciousness act. Um, up, up wake is, is evolutionary. Up wake is what we want what we want and hopefully what we're going for. Mr. Ben Okri, thanks so much for coming into studio and giving us a flavour of your book. And it does come at the start with a, a, an advisement to read it slowly and I challenge the person that will manage uh, to swing through it very quickly. Um, indeed, the books uh, no longer were nourished the world is how he puts it in this book. Uh, definitely, I think it will force people to think. I know it has me. I've even found it intruding on my sleep. That brings us to the end <laughs> of this edition of Perspective. Thank you so much. Thank you.